Hey guys, Ed here. Interesting looking little podcast for you here. I've got this mind map that I'm doing and it's all about researching a market. Just last weekend, you might have spotted, I was a little bit excited and it actually was released during uh, the launch of Madcast, which was very inconvenient because I had to delay gratification until after uh, we'd finished getting everybody settled in. But uh, a card game that I used to play many, 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 many years ago, <laughs> probably 20 now I think about it, uh, was released on the iPad, which is very exciting. But that's neither here nor there. As I was playing it, I was realising, gee, that would be an interesting potential market for a magcast. And so I started uh, creating a little mind map here of the things that I would look at in a marketplace to have a look at how to research uh, if we're going to publish a magazine on New Apple Newsstand. Now, of course, people are very familiar, I hope you're familiar with our market research techniques for creating websites and searching out phrases and researching phrases and, and determining whether a website market is, is effective. These methods and influences are the gold standard. People use them for all sorts of projects, whether it's a $10 project or a, a billion dollar project. Um, it really is um, the gold standard for that sort of research. But of course, Magcast being so new means two things. One, the fundamentals really don't change, but where we look and what we look for does change. So I've made a start here and I want your help. So I'm going to explain what I have mind mapped here, but then I'd love you in the comments below to contribute your thoughts, your suggestions about what other resource uh, research, I should say, not resource, research areas that you might use to start creating an app or in this case, a magcast app. So a, a magazine which appears in Apple's newsstand. So let me explain what I've put together. And this is in no specific order yet. I will make it in an order. And I, what I'll do is I'm going to do videos for magcasters on each of these elements here, but I also want to make sure I've got everything first. So I'm uh, appealing to you guys. And whenever I look at a particular market, the first thing that goes through my head is the classic single target market exercise, uh, which Dean Jackson uh, invented uh, in his bef amazing before, during and after videos. Just do a Google search for breakthrough DNA. If you haven't had a chance to be introduced to that concept, there's an amazing free report and audio and get through and have a look at that. And so, you know, I think about listing all the possible markets and then the more specific, the better. And then I've made a note here, might need to do that after I've been in the, the, ma the market a little bit. Now, because I know Magic the Gathering a bit, I could do this exercise right now. But if I didn't know my market well enough, I would have to do that after we do the influencer exercise, which we'll get to down the track. Like I said, this is my mind map. I want you to understand that this is the way I start to think about things. All right, you're seeing the gritty underbelly of how I go about creating videos and product. Um, very much Google Insights is a tool that I use, uh, formerly known as Google Trends, just to see the popularity of, of the market. And it's, uh, again, I'll do a video on this specifically for Magic the Gathering for Madcasters to have a look at, but it's fascinating that, you know, it was incredibly popular in the early 2000s, 2003, 2004, and it's probably dropped off to one fifth the popularity. But here's the thing, it stayed extremely consistent all through that time. So there's definitely a base group of players, uh, which is still a significant and interesting market. And I suspect with the iPad launch and the iPad being such a superior experience, I, my gut feel why I'm interested in this market is that I suspect it will take off again. But that's a gut feel. That's, let's have a look at that. Next, uh, and as I say, these are in no order yet. I will put them in an order, but these are just things that when I'm thinking about market research, when I'm thinking about commerciality is a big deal because, you know, you want to be able to make some money or you want to have advertisers in your magazine who want to be able to make some money. So it's important to understand how people make money in a market. 
makes sense, right? Um, you know, even if your goal is list building or it's service or whatever it happens to be, you still need to understand what the commerciality is there or understand that, you know, this is a not-for-profit and, you know, you're seeking donors or you're just doing it out of the goodness of your heart. That's fine, but make a conscious decision to do so. I'm assuming most of you listening to this want to make some money. So commerciality is very important. So what do I look at? I would definitely look at Google search listings for the main keywords. Who's advertising? See what's going on there. I would absolutely do some um, keyword testing based on the major phrase. Uh, so I'd look, type in Magic the Gathering and see what comes up in the Google Keyword Tool or use a, a fantastic tool like Market Samurai. I'd do a Google search for Magic the Gathering and affiliate programs or joint venture opportunities just to see if there's anything out there. Again, will I use it or not? I don't know. I'm gathering information at the moment. Uh, before you can think outside of the box, as Twyla Tharp would say, you have to have a box and you need to fill it with all this stuff. What are people buying and selling here in this marketplace? Are people selling in this market? People buying in this marketplace? Of course, uh, in Magic the Gathering's case, it's a trading card game. So by definition, people are buying and selling cards, for example. Um, but there's this new online thing and people obviously buying um, subscriptions, there's in-app purchases, um, there's strategy guides, there's all sorts of things. I'm also interested in the look of look and feel of the marketplace. What level of design's going on here? What's happening? Because, as I've said in this next bubble, what's acceptable in that marketplace? I'm always interested to have a look at that. Then the next thing, of course, is newsstand research. That's the market that we're going to be in in the magazine. So it's important to understand who's who in the zoo there. So what category would we go in? Is there any competition? I would instantaneously subscribe to that. I would make a list of what I like, what I don't like. I'd look at their pricing and business models. Are they accepting advertising? Are they doing affiliate stuff? Are they list building? The answer, probably in most markets, none of those because most people are just whacking up their magazines and doing traditional ads. We know far better than that. But that to me is an interesting thing that I would check. Perhaps the most important exercise I would undergo, and this was uh, brilliantly taught in Always Be Shipping, and I've done actual YouTube videos on this concept as well, on top 20 influencers, a concept I first read um, about in, um, oh, it's terrible, I can't, McLeod, Hugh McLeod, Hugh McLeod's book. And I thought it was absolutely fascinating. His basic contention, and my contention to you is, Going forward in the future, if you're not one of the top 20 influencers in your market or your niche, your history. Pretty pretty harsh, but I, I truly believe that. I really think that that's the case. And so you need to know who's who in the zoo. And we've created and put out videos on things like creating a Twitter list strategy to follow those influencers. Who are the popular blogs? Set up news alerts. Use Google Reader. Do all those things that we teach in um, a course like Always Be Shipping, which Magcasters, of course, get uh, for free as part of that, um, the, the, the program, which is cool. But this, to me, is a vital, vital element of any market research. You've got to understand what's going on, even particularly, most importantly, if you know the, the Magcast opportunity for, for people is that they can actually make incredible impact in a market where they've had little or no experience prior to publishing their first magazine issue uh, with the help of contributors and great designers and so on. So understanding who the people are, whose content you want to reprint and ask, seek permission to and being part of that really is important. So another element of market research that I would do is look at learning the market. And the what I mean by that is... I use the Halbert wow fact method. You know, anytime I see an interesting fact, and this is actually a lot, you have a huge advantage if you're new to a market as opposed to somebody who's a bit, you know, experienced. Because if you're a bit experienced, stuff that used to, you forget what used to make you excited about the market when you started. And so you really have to clear your mind and your biases and think about what's wow. And so anytime that there's a, Wow fact, well, in the old days, we'd write it on a three by five card and we'd um, you know, keep a box of three by five cards for each project. And we'd, uh, as Gary would often say, we'd fondle the three by five cards and that would help for all sorts of things. In the 21st century, I must admit, I still like a three by five card, uh, but I also use Evernote. I create a special Evernote book 
and create notes in that because I can do that from anywhere. I can do that from the iPad. I can do that from a computer. I can do that from the phone, wherever it happens to be. I can create a particular thing so that I can have all this information as I'm collecting it uh, because you never know where it's going to come in handy. And often what I will do is print out once I've collated a whole bunch of stuff, I'll print that out so I can physically fondle it and have a look at it. Other things that I try to remind myself of in a market are things like the beginner bias. As a general rule, ask yourself this question. Who is going to buy the most stuff? Somebody who is being experienced in the marketplace and been doing that thing for 20 years or somebody who's just beginning? Yes, you're absolutely correct. If, like in most markets, and I'm not saying it's all, but in the vast majority of markets, the beginner is the one who gets all excited and buys all the books and the equipment and the gear. And what you realize, I remember when I started playing guitar, you know, I, was, I had a problem with buying guitars. <laughs> and now, you know, I've whittled my entire collection back to, you know, a couple of guitars, which I absolutely love because I went through that life cycle of the enthusiast. And, you know, you've got to keep that in mind. So when you're thinking about what sort of magazine do I want to create, um, as a general rule, my bias is towards the beginner. Not always. You have to check. But that's, that's a bias that I have. And then finally I've got here for completion is that you might have more than one market. And so, you know, you've got to look at how, you, how do you decide? And, you know, I've got questions that I put down here. Which do you like more? Look at the numbers. You know, have a look. You know, what do you like more? Look at the numbers. Availability of content. Uh, the more, the better. Um, you know, the more social media savvy the market is, the easier it will be to approach experts and become an influencer in that market. You know, we're, <laughs> I cannot tell you how incredible the stories are that I'm getting of people who are just doing amazing things in their particular marketplace um, because they're able to get their first magazine out because they haven't had to write it themselves. They've been able to reprint wonderful content from industry major players, stuff that people want to read. And guess what? There's no duplicate content when it comes to a magazine, um, which is just awesome. So it's fantastic. So I'm looking at availability of content and seeing what's there. Competition. Um, believe it or not, most people think, oh, I'm looking for a market without competition. Mm, not me. I'm actually think more competition is better because that means there's money there. If there's no competition in a market, I worry for that market. It's a real yellow flag for me because trust me, there are no unique ideas in this world. There are, you know, there are mag casters out there and they're all, you know, and I imagine dozens of you will be thinking about the same market. It doesn't matter because ideas are nothing. Action is the only thing that act which matters, which actually <laughs> brings me to my last point, which is choose and act decisively. There's such an incredible opportunity right now while this is such a unique market and by just picking and moving and getting it done, getting that, you know, not thinking about it, not doing a mega issue, your first issue out, make it simple. Um, some of the magazines that have been put out so far, like uh, Happy to Survive is one that I can think of, is a sampler magazine. It's got four articles in it, I think, three or four articles that's it to show people what it's going to be like and putting it out as a special free download and then of course the the big new magazine is coming out the next month but they've planted their flag in that market they've already got mind share and that's what i think you need to do and that's and you can do you can do it because we made it so easy to do so but here's the thing this is my list i would love to see what you do. So here's what I'm doing. I'm providing a PDF of this. I'm also providing a couple of mind mapping formats for you so you can download it and use it in your own mind mapping uh, format as well. Um, and I want you to contribute. Let us know in the comments what you would add to this market research if you were doing something in a magazine. Okay. Let us know. Let us think and I'll share the results. Okay, and then of course for the uh, what I'm going to do then, and just just so you understand, I will use your contributions in a commercial way because I'm going to create some videos on each of these sections uh, for magcasters. So there you have it. 
that is what I am doing. I would love your help with this um, and see. let's see what we can else we can come up with because I don't know that this is a um, comprehensive list. I'd also be interested in hearing what sort of order you'd put these in too. Um, so there you have it. Uh, thanks very much for listening. I hope this has been interesting to you. And, and this, remember, has lessons not just in the magcast market, but in any market that you're looking at, because the fundamentals of market research, I believe, don't change. Okay, folks, thanks very much for listening. Hope it was interesting for you. Oh, if it was interesting, please, uh, you know, hit up the Google+, Plus, the like, the Facebook like, the, the tweet, retweet. Love it if you did that for us. Um, that would be really, really appreciated. Okay, gang, speak soon.